Mm. Ferry Valverde, I thought, was brilliant, oh. offering real legs in their running. But um, the right back, Carvajal, Menzi, the left back was yeah, superb. Yeah. I thought they were excellent today. I really did. And as I said, see, I've seen them plenty of times this year. But that was the standout. They took you by surprise, I think. They took me by yeah. surprise, but. In another way, as I said, this time last year, they beat Liverpool and I was surprised about that. But in this competition, they find an extra gear. And I don't yeah. know what it is, whether it's just this, this order about them, the white shirts, this competition in itself. They get to the latter end of this, this stage all the time. And everyone's talking about the Spanish league being weak in transition. Mm -hmm. Villarreal won the other game, 1-0 against Bayern. And this team here... Yeah. Atletico was still in the tight to a certain extent. Yeah. Barcelona in the Europa League. Mm. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. We are live here for the next 90 minutes. Plenty to talk about between now and 11.30. And it's kind of mixed emotions in here, really, because we've seen, oh, maybe apart from Joe, we've seen a disappointing result for Chelsea, but we've seen a brilliant performance from Karim Benzema. And I think sometimes when you work in English football and you cover English teams, you get obsessed talking about their result. But I think we have to start by talking about the man who's scored 37 goals now this season, his best ever return. And there's the most important part of his season still to come. Yeah, and this is the business end, and he's still scoring goals. He shot, he shot his team to the top of the league. Are they 12 points clear now yeah. in, the, in the Spanish league? Uh, flying in that sense. But he's the talisman. He's the leader now. And again, he stepped out of the shadows from Cristiano Ronaldo. We mentioned before the game, having that humility to be able to sit in the background because he knew and understood what it meant to the team in terms of winning. But as soon as that opportunity comes for him to come out of the shadows and take over this team and take control of it, in all aspects of his game, he's gone up another level. Yeah. This was a brilliant goal, wasn't it? Right. Not just this header. The, you see him here, he gets involved in the game. Thiago has to go with him. Christensen doesn't know where to go. He has, he has a little push at him and then he just delays his run again. One, two, Vinicius was too quick for Christensen. That's why he left the field. And this was a brilliant cross. Do you know what, Mac? And the ball, the, the ball as it comes back to him, and he, he doesn't break his stride. He plays up the outside of his ball, yeah. perfect weight, and then to carry on his run and the finish, just to guide it in that corner. It was an outstanding goal. Yeah. Uh, the, the difference in the two headers as well. That header there, he's had to put a bit on it. Yeah. Um, and it's just for young strikers watching the game, and not, not always do you have to use your neck muscles to kind of smash the ball back where it came from, or or try and break the balls of net. This second goal shows you here, you just mm. let the ball hit you, but this is a great move. They get out, they play. They, we could show you clip after clip of them getting out of situations like that because of the space in the midfield in the first half. But here, yes, Modric gets a bit too much space, you'd say, if you're being overcritical, but then he just goes in here, it's a, the delivery, and just letting the ball hit your head, but then guiding it into the area and using the pace of the ball. I mean, it was just superb mm. to watch it. We was all in here screaming, going, wow, what a header. Yeah, the ball, like... The the, the delivery, just to put it in, just drop it over Thiago's head into that position there. And and, and you're right, you know, the, the decision making, the ability to, to stay calm and to choose the right technique, leaning back, all your momentum's going back. He knows he has to guide it up and over mm. Mendy's. And Mendy's, Mendy's outstanding shot stopper. So it's just an excellent goal. It's the power of experience. All three of you were saying that if you're 21, 22, you're... You're so compelled to... He yeah, don't, you've got he, such he desire to score. That score goal at 21. You know? He won't score that goal at 21. Yeah. He's getting better with age. Yeah. I think he, it's just his movement in and out. He knows he doesn't have to fly into the box. He's always just on the periphery. He knows where all the defenders are. And he just arrives really late. His experience counts for everything, doesn't it? But to, to follow up with a hat-trick against... You know, he scored two at the weekend to yeah. take Madrid clear again. He scored another three tonight. After this three against Paris Saint-Germain, he scored two away in Mallorca. Yeah. He's just there every... He missed the Classico, and you can sort of see why. But every time he sets foot on the pitch, he just looks as if he's going to score goals now. And he's averaging over a goal a game in this year yeah. of all years. I mean, it's just superb. At, at 34, by the way, he's the best number nine on the planet for me. I mean, we, we can talk about Lewandowski, great player. Harry Kane's come into, back into that form we all knew about great player. But for me, he, this guy at the moment is another level. At the, he's mm. just he's just phenomenal. He's impacting the game in so many different areas, mm. not just goals, assists, link up play, link up well, yeah, play yeah. taking this thing out of the game, slowing the game down. That's a number nine. What you, that, that sounds like a playmaker, mm. but that's the mm. number nine who scored thirty what thirty seven goals now this yeah. season. Phenomenal. And it's a good point because I think you know you see the numbers and you, you people will talk about the goals after tonight, but when you see him live. It's the work in everything. Mm -hmm. His movement is really clever. At times he just floats out wide, doesn't he? And sort of nearly link hands with Vinicius. But his link-up play with him is excellent at the moment. He knew that's where the danger was. So the fact that he, he gravitated out there, away from Thiago, towards Christensen, and almost 
doubled up on the in the first half. Give them a tot of time, and that's where the game was won. Was effectively yes, we'll go. We'll talk about the third goal, but the the, the performance in the first half would, was, as I said, exception. That's where the game was generally won for me because Chelsea couldn't do anything. They're always trying to chase the game then throughout the throughout. throughout and the I think Ancelotti, half. Ancelotti deserves credit yeah, for does, that yeah. because mm. the way they set up, it, it wasn't by accident what they were doing, mm. going out and isolating Christensen. He ended up having to come mm. off because he was he was given that much of a torrid time because Vinicius was out there, Benzema was coming out there. But I mean, again, tactically, first half they were great. Two kills shorted up, as Joe said, in the second half, but it didn't amount to enough. By the way, if we get another Spanish announcement in the studio, we'll get <laughs> we'll get you to translate what they're telling us. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've heard them as well. <laughs> why not? Why not? Um, let's have a look at the third one. And I think we, you know, we should all be careful about being too critical yeah. here of the of two men who've been brilliant for Chelsea this yeah, season. Yeah, two men absolutely outstanding, as good as anyone in a Chelsea shirt the last eighteen months. But here, Mendy just gets it wrong. And here, Rudiger, I don't know why he doesn't go with his right foot, clear it out, be aggressive. And this is dry to start the second half. All of Thomas Tuchel's work at half time would be would be gone but it's, as he's coming it just, just stick it into Rose Ed yeah. and stick Benzema in Rose Ed as well mm. and clear it I don't know why he doesn't do it but again both of them players have been outstanding players and it's just they got it wrong on that moment Great opportunity for Rudiger he's an aggressive player to really like Joe, like Joe said there put Benzema in the stands there he's got a good opportunity to What's to, he thinking? Uh, I don't know just he's, trying to, he's, trying he's trying to, just win, trying he's to win, win it win the ball trying to keep possession, possession. Yeah, he, he just looks, smash it with his right foot right, everything goes do you, know, do you know what might be interesting? What might be? I don't know if he was booked at that stage in the game or Roger not. In the first half, and maybe yeah. sometimes with Rudiger, you have to you have to sort of calm him down. So at the start of the second half, maybe you know he might have been aggressive. He might have been at half time unhappy with his team's performance. Mm. Maybe he'd gone to calm. Maybe he'd have been told to calm him down. In that situation, that wasn't a situation for calm. That was a situation for aggression, and he just got it wrong. But mm. it's a good point because he was booked at that point. Yeah. yeah so. That may well have played in his yeah. mind. Um, let's get the thoughts of a man who I'm sure will be very happy to return here and pick up a win as impressive as that. Here's Carlo Ancelotti. So it must be a very satisfying night for you. Yeah, we played well. Honestly, we had a good control of the game. We were good uh, to build up from the back. Dangerous in counter-attack. So it was a good night, but it's only the first half of this uh, round. Uh, and... We have to look forward, prepare the next game. But does that feel like one of the more complete performances from the side this season, maybe? Yeah, it was, um, it was really good. I think that uh, we, we show good organisation, defensively, offensively. We were dangerous counter attack. We had a fantastic performance in front from Benzema. They scored three goals and, uh, yeah, it was a good performance. Vinicius was causing a lot of problems in the first half. You got that right, didn't you? Vinicius in the first half, Junior. Repeat. In the first half, you had a lot of a lot, particularly wide positions. Yeah, no, I think that that helped us, uh, the fact that uh, we were good from the back uh, to, to build up, to find space between lines, and then uh, with, with Benzema and Vinicius, we were dangerous. There's still a job to be finished, but do you feel you have a big advantage now? Oh, we have advantage. We have to be honest, no confidence. We have to, to, to prepare the next game in the league. And then Tuesday, it will be another game. We have a lot of respect at this team that is still the winner of the Champions League. And so today, I think we did better. And our ne next game, we never know. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. See well, look, you do never know, but we've spoken a lot about the talent on the pitch, the man on your pitch is there, but what about the talent off the pitch? If there is a man who knows what you need to do when you're 3-1 up in the second leg of a European game, it's Carlo Ancelotti, and he will have a plan. He, he will. I mean, experience counts for a lot at this yeah. stage. He's got it on the pitch, but also, as you say, off the pitch, he's navigated his way through trophy win after trophy win. So he'll know what to do, but it's, listen, he understands it's not over. These games can change on a, on a, on a sixpence. Mm -hmm. Uh, a split decision, a sending off maybe, uh, a mistake as we saw today. So he'll go in this, he won't be overconfident, he'll be going there professional. You know what, if Chelsea had taken just one of those chances mm. they created, we'd be having mm. probably quite a different conversation, I guess, at this point. And when you see these chances back to back, they were good. Yeah, they were good chances. I mean, Chelsea played well in the second half. The first half, it was one of the worst performances I've seen from Chelsea in a long, long time. Second half, change the system. Tuchel and here Lukaku has to do better you talk about the quality of Benzema in them situations no, but they were probing weren't they Mappa? yeah and this was a great chance wasn't it and you can't even 
quantify the fact that it took a deflection to get there. He just gets it all wrong. He got his first one terribly wrong, and that was the second one. But he didn't have the impact that you wanted him to. Shot from Mason Mount, of course, a little bit too high. And a good one from Ziyech near the end. And they huffed and puffed. This was uh, Reese James always trying. There was just nothing in it in the end, was he? He just wanted that little bit of quality, whether it's from you know, a wide man or the centre forwards when he came on. They wanted an impact off someone, and they, unfortunately, it just didn't materialise. Seven goals in two games under Thomas Tuchel. Yeah. It just, we just don't talk about that sort of stuff with him. Yeah, and we mentioned before the game, in the Premier League since Thomas Tuchel's come here, they've had more clean sheets than anybody, mm-hmm. any other team, Liverpool, City. So it's unusual the last two games, what we've seen, seven goals in two games, and we're looking to address that, I'm sure. Well, look, he's brought plenty of success since he's arrived at Chelsea. He's also brought searing honesty. It's going to be interesting, isn't it, after the break, to hear what Thomas Tuchel made of this performance from Chelsea. Thomas, a, a lot to process tonight, a lot to discuss. What's your reaction to that defeat? Well, it's a heavy loss. It was one of the worst first halves that, that, that I saw from us here at Stamford Bridge. On this kind of level, you cannot play like this. Uh, this was uh, individually as a team and uh, from all of us was uh, by far not enough. We were like not doing what we were used to do and far, far, far from our standards. And, uh, then you lose games. We could see that in the first half. They were, they were very open and getting wide and finding a lot of space. Yeah, everything. It's not only open, like passing, where we pass, how we pass, when we pass, where do we attack the ball possession game. There was uh, the, the intensity and challenges, the desire the, the, to win challenges, how we close spaces now. Like the first half was so far from any standards that we set ourselves that we cannot complain when we lose this half. You got a foot back into the game with that have a skull, yeah. of course, and that gives you a chance, but then disaster strikes okay. straight if after. If you if you if you have this goal, you have the energy back and I we still I mean we have in second half I think sixteen shots to, to one shot. Yeah. You can you can always come back, you can equalize, you can win it. But uh, if you if you kill the game yourself after 48 minutes, it's it's harder and harder, of course. Still, we had uh, chances in second half uh, to make it a 3-2, which could be crucial, but uh, not today. A little bit downcast now, but you're still going to battle on. There's still a chance. Sorry, you look a little I, bit I down, down, downcast. Downcast. You look a bit. Fed up. Well, as well, my God, what do you expect exactly, to? Yeah, what exactly. do you expect to stand here and smile over? No, no, not no. at all. I'm saying, it, but you will still have to go to Madrid. It's no, we don't step. have to go to Madrid. We have to go to Southampton. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is very, very important to process this first. Absolutely crucial that we first go to Southampton, and I will make sure that everybody processes this because this is the absolutely most important now. Because if we keep on playing like this, we will lose in Southampton. And then we don't need to think about Bernabeu. We will get hammered in Bernabeu. Thank you, Thomas.